Hey everybody, I am back. My name is Jeff and I am a full-time reseller and a part-time YouTuber. <laughs> um, thanks for everybody who reached out, kind of checked to see if I was okay. I am okay. I, after the last video and after a lot of the drama that had kind of gone on in the community, I wanted to take a couple days to kind of like digest and let things kind of cool down. And, uh, you know, between that, uh, my sales have been actually really, really good in comparison to what they had been. I mean, they, they were actually, they, they have been actually really good. And I have to report that the correlation between so deselecting the button that requires buyers to input their their credit card prior to a offer or a uh, bid on an auction i don't know it seems like it's it seems like it did something it seems like it woke something up in my store and i can't remember which day i did it it was i did it i did it right before i made the last video so Right after I did that, the, the sales really started to come through. And so what this is, this is Wednesday. So yeah, sales Sunday, Saturday, Sunday. Actually, they've all been really good sales. In fact, so good, I was actually gonna make a what sold video. And then I thought, well, and then, and then I got to the point where I wasn't ready for a topic. I wasn't ready to make another YouTube video. And then I had to get those items shipped out. And I also was struggling with, you know, are doing what sold videos really what is important right now? Because if I'm doing a what sold video and other people are struggling to make sales, but I just don't know. I don't know if there's value there. Um, because a lot of my items are longer tail items and are those items like what is the point of showing those items are people interested in seeing those items these are the things i'm struggling with to to do and a lot of this has to do also with not really knowing what ebay wants from us as sellers because ebay to me is the place where you can go and you can buy and you can find anything. And, you know, you still can do that. But are the are the issues with the platform that we're having now, I mean, this is nothing that every other YouTube creator slash reseller isn't talking about. Are they temporary? Are they, is it, is it a growth thing that they're trying to implement changes and that things will get back to, to a new normal? Our, our seller, like, I, I guess what I would like to know is, are we being punished for having low sell-through stock in our, in, our, in our store, or is it just, like, are our items not being seen, or are they being seen, but, you know, there's just other people that are promoting higher, or the search is messed up like there, there's just there's a lot of things that we don't know it's <laughs> oh to be at ebay open this year just to see it, you know are are is it going to be all raw raw from ebay and they're gonna like because they know the issues they know the stuff that's going on they have to know that these things are going to be brought up so it would be interesting to see if anybody does bring up some of these hot topics that that we've all been discussing in the in the in the uh youtube community or if they're just gonna totally like ignore it and act like business as usual. So all of that, which is a mouthful. Uh, can you believe I used to do these videos in one take? I, I honestly cannot fathom how I did that before I actually knew how to like use iMovie and put clips together. Um, thank goodness I figured that out. Uh, so, and. And I've been adjusting to life without Maria. She's in Australia. Uh, our, our middle daughter is going to be welcoming in her first child, our our first grandchild. 
uh, any day now. I mean, her due date is on Friday. And, you know, I mean, hell, it could be happening right now for all I know. No, I think somebody would have shot me a text. Um, so, yeah, adjusting to life uh, without Maria. Uh, business has been has been pretty good, although I knew this was going to happen. I knew that the moment I came on and made a YouTube video, the business would slow down. Uh, so today is a bit of a slow day. But when I but when I say that after I deselected that button, it did seem to wake something up to where I was, you know, I was making sales. I was getting offers. I was getting the ability to like way more to send offers to watchers. And let's see. So and also I would make all I would. I would make an offer and then, you know, it just felt like people people were responding and asking questions. So I don't know. It, 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 unless you are dead set that you want buyers to be locked into having that, to having them pay. I mean, I don't get a lot of non-payments. And when I do, it, it doesn't bother me that much. Like I have a big store. So what if an item, you know, somebody buys it and then they don't pay and then I just relist it. But if you are experiencing slow sales, I, I, I would highly suggest deselecting it at least for a week or two weeks to kind of see if that makes any difference. It felt good for things to feel semi-normal again. It felt good to wake up to some overnight buys, although today the only new fresh new payments that I had coming in were previous buys from yesterday. So, and then, and then I went back to the gym last night. I, um, I've made this decision that I find that resellers don't prioritize their health as much as they should. And it's easy to get locked into this, this routine and this grind. You must, you must feel like you're on this hamster wheel, right? You're, you wake up. You know, you do all the things that you do when you wake up, then you start listing and then packaging and then sourcing if you need to source. And it's just like this. And then at the end of the day, you're just tired. And, and it's amplified now because it's a stressful environment. And we feel like, oh, well, at least I, I can't speak for you, but I know for me when when I'm going through a difficult time, whether it's slow sales or just, you know, business is slow, I have this like work harder. I got to work harder. I got to, I got to list more. I got to, I got to do all the things that I can do that are going to make me money now. And, and then the health, the, 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 our, our health, it gets pushed down to the bottom of the pile. So I know that I've inspired a few of you guys to, you know, start selling locally. And, you know, I kind of, so yesterday I, w I went and signed up and I, I haven't had a gym membership for since before summer, because generally during the, su the summer months, I, I like to get out more. I like to run. Um, and we're getting to that period of time. Like yesterday was just a miserable rainy day. And I'm just like, okay, you know what? I'm not going to be able to get out that much. Um, so I, I want, I want to set a goal to, to go five days a week. I like to run 50 miles a month. 50 miles a month is, I know my body responds to that. And so I did four yesterday and then I did some weights and I'm quite sore today, but you know, I want to try. So putting this out there, uh, I'm hoping that it holds myself. I hold myself accountable to that but you know coming from somebody who you know one one summer many many years ago not many years ago I think it was maybe three or four I was I was so sick I I was just, I was sick the entire summer I don't even like I literally thought I was dying uh doctors couldn't find any they they just had no clue what was wrong and, and, and it was just messing up so much in my body like without health we've got nothing so no matter all the crap that's going on in the reselling community, none of it matters. 
if we don't have our health. So um, I know for me, I'm going to prioritize it e e above. I'm going to try to take this next month because, you know, it's been proven. I think it's, is it 16 days or 27 days? If you do something, you create that habit. This is from like military studies. I think it's 16, I think it's 17 days actually. So I need to, I need to recreate. I'm recreating that habit of, of going to the gym and working out and running. 50 miles a month is my goal. Let's see if I can, let's see if I can get there before October 19th. I feel like putting it out there is, is going to make me feel like, okay, I can't put it out there without, without not doing it. So, um, so yeah. So today, um, my topics are going to be all over the place again today. I have notes that I've kind of like written. Like, it's amazing how much mental space I give to YouTube these days. It's like I'm always like I'm I'll be driving somewhere and then I'll be like thinking and then I'll be, you know, next thing you know, I'm like talking out loud about the different things that I want to talk about. And then I go to create the video. I look at my notes and they're just like a jumbled mess and I'm trying to like remember, okay, what was it I even wanted to convey here? Um, and I'm still struggling too, to figure out how to incorporate a routine with YouTube to where I can be maybe a little bit more consistent. Um, but I, but one thing I do know is I'm never going to make content just to, just to make content. Like I, if I'm not inspired or it doesn't spark joy as Maria Kondo is, I'm not just going to make a video just to make a video. Uh, I, I, I respect your guys, your guys' time too much, my time too much. That's another, uh, thing that we, we don't get back. So. With that being said, um, I think the thing that I struggle with the most right now is trying to figure out the way forward through this. You know, is it is this just a temporary blip or are there significant changes that eBay is making that punishes and rewards certain certain sellers, certain stores? It, it's I, I can't believe, I mean, I shouldn't say I can't believe. I never would have thought that this would even have been an issue that crossed a question that I would have is like, would I be punished? And punished can come in the form of different, different ways. We've all talked about them. Uh, we've all talked, you know, ad nauseum, the different conspiracy theories and things that we think or we suspect um so i think that so here's something that i've that i've noticed is that search is messed up however when i go to look for some of my long tail items and i go and i and i type in an incognito browser i can still find some i can still find them and Maybe it's because there's not a lot of them out there, or like maybe it's just because the way I I did my key my my titles. I can still find them, and then I had a friend, and I've talked about this. I have a friend, and I'll send him the my title structure, and he'll look it up, and he'll you know even if you delete some of the word like so I've had like let's say a, a title that has like you know I don't know twelve different words in it. I'll, I'll delete the last word, click enter. Does it still show up? Delete the last word, click, click enter. Does it, and it still shows up. And, 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 you know, I'll, I'll be able to delete four or five of those keywords and it's still showing up. And that gives me hope that people are still being able to use search to find items. And maybe it's just because I don't sell a lot of, a lot of high sell through rate items so there's less competition maybe that'll maybe that will help me in the long run maybe as more and more people change business models that the, there will be less competition for collectibles vintage um ephemera just stuff i don't know I, i'm 
it's possible. So maybe if one can just endure and get through this period in time, you know, that I call it the dark ages of reselling because it feels like the dark ages of reselling. It feels like it because sales are down and we don't know what the heck is going on. Like we're, we're, we're still just blindfolded trying to make our way, you know, listening to this this person this person trying to find commonalities um adding them to our own biases so one thing i think too is comics might save me to some degree because i have found that people who collect comics they have certain ways that they find books and they're really good at going out and searching and, and, and finding uh, what they're looking for. So that could help me out. I know that doesn't probably help any of you guys out, but I'm just, I'm just trying to think like, and formulate a game plan on how to, how to move forward. And I think that's the, I think that's the hardest part is trying to figure out like, all right, so let me give you something that I was thinking about today is I used to trade uh, stocks uh, full time. I took a break from trading stocks back in, I don't remember the exact time, but it had to have been maybe six months prior to when COVID hit. And it was just a coincidence that I, that I stopped trading them. The markets felt very toppy. I wanted to pull out uh, some money. I wanted to pull out my money and just go to a take, go to a cash and kind of like wait and see. And then COVID happened. And then, I mean, we all know what happened to the stock market, right? It tanked, it tanked hard. And the velocity of that move really scared me about putting any money back into the markets, which in theory, that would have been a great time to buy, but the world was just in chaos. And then it rebounded, like super fast. And as I was watching all the events and you know dealing with COVID, and I was like, okay, so now the markets are back to all time highs. But in my mind, so like maybe a year after COVID had started, I was thinking, should I put some money back in the market? But and here, here was my 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 rationale is that the markets are back to all time highs, but all of these companies have suffered significant sales declines due to COVID. It makes no sense that the markets are back to previous highs and just cruising along as if nothing ever happened when all these companies are going to be reporting significantly lower earnings. And so I just, and, and, and coupled with the fact that, you know, sales were going through the roof with my, my resale business. So I did nothing with the, st the stock market and I have not gotten back in since. But the stock market and reselling, like I see, I, do, I see some commonalities. And, and I think something that we all need to remember about this time that we're experiencing right now is that everything changes you know yes the algorithm has changed we don't know what the change is and making too many drastic changes to one's business without facts can be damaging because you could be making all these changes and then a year from now the algorithm is going to change again and i think this is something that we really need to remember is that this too shall pass it is scary wednesday and thursday of last week were two of the absolute worst days i have ever had in, in reselling and it really sucked because it it was culminated on the day that maria was leaving so it's like she was I'm, I'm dropping her off at the airport and i was just like in this miserable state of like you know questioning everything as i'm sure a lot of a lot of you guys out there are questioning and 
or, 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 you know, and it's like, you have a good day of sales. It's like, oh, it's just, this feels normal. And then, you know, it's like, again, we're a product of our last 10 sales. So whatever is going on behind the scenes that are affecting our sales, I think, I think it is important to remember that this will change again. And so making too many drastic changes to, to one's business is can be detrimental because then it feels like, you know, you're changing here and then in a year or two years, it's like the algorithm is going to change again. So I think, do I think not doing anything is prudent? No, I think, I think changes are always needed to be made in any business, whether it's reselling or whatever. Um, I just kind of wanted to put that out there to, oh, oh, and the other, the other similarity that I notice about the, the, the stock world versus it, it would have been so funny when, when, when I was, when I was a trader, I didn't, I didn't watch YouTube videos or anything. It was, it, tw Twitter was more the big thing that people use to, to, on social networks. But something uh, something else that I've noticed, so in this in this in the stock world, you know, you have people who are who are selling who you know who are authorities in the well, at, at that time kind of like Twitter, and um, yeah, well, Twitter was the big thing, but you'd have people selling services, you know, marketing, sell uh, offering these services to you know you know pay me to. To, to tell you what to buy you know there were they also had these services where you could you know you could place a trade like I could place a trade in an account and then other people could sign up with this brokerage and it would mirror your trades so you wouldn't even have to trade you could just pick somebody who you think is a good trader and then you could mirror their trades but or there would be like you know, monthly services, kind of like Patreon things. And, and it's just, inter it's interesting when I see that kind of going on in, in the, in the reselling community as well is, is, you know, people offering services. That's something that, um, I myself would never, you know, see as net as something as being necessary that I'm offering to people. But yeah, I was just thinking about that today. So, all right, I've got a couple things that are, a couple comments there's you know not that many there's only two 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 comments that I wanted to to show cuz uh yeah guess what so JL Whitmire says guess what if i'm going to have to drive my own traffic then i'll shut down my ebay store and open a shopify store ebay needs to remember their original value proposition i've been hearing all kinds of issues for buyers that's part of what's killing sales. eBay never double. eBay never backs down from changes long before the current administration. As a company that always doubles down on this on stupid. Um, I remember. I agree and disagree with two things. With two things in there specific is that eBay does need to. eBay should remember. I mean, they don't have to do anything, right? They don't owe us anything, and. That has become abundantly clear. But they should honor to some degree longtime sellers. I've often I've often been of the mindset that it would go a long way if if you if you've been a seller for five years or ten years, you should get additional, let's just call them perks. And a perk that I would like to see implemented would be a dedicated line to resellers who have been on the platform for 10 plus years because we've seen a lot and and I find that a lot of times when I'm calling in to speak with you know I, I'm getting really new people who 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 can't really help me because I know more than it's not that I know more than them but I have taught many of customer service reps things in the past and it's we shouldn't be doing that we shouldn't be having to to do that we and I think having a dedicated line to say, you know, if a reseller has been on eBay for 10 plus years, they're pretty serious about it, right? And and they've paid their dues in the form of fees. 
and it would go a long way to establish establishing some sort of like loyalty you know if if i felt like ebay was respecting me as a seller by rewarding me for being a long time seller i would have to think long and hard about whether or not i want to sell on other platforms now right now a lot of people are being forced to to, to do that it's not really even an option um, but, but yeah, um, uh, oh, what was the other thing? Uh, yeah, I, I totally agree. And then, and, and another thing that I want to talk uh, about and kind of just put that out there is if you have a big store and, you know, you sell a myriad of different items, um, you know, there, I don't know why everything is lumped between high sell through rate and long tail. It's like nobody talks about what's in the middle and there is a middle. But let's just say, you know, you have a big store, you've, t you know, it's taken you years to build up this store. If in fact, eBay is punishing those kinds of sellers and they don't necessarily, and this is an if, again, we don't know if they don't want that kind of merchandise on the store and they're punishing sellers for that in the form of you know no visibility or just no sales and 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 what whatnot if they go down that road route road, if they go down that road route <laughs> they go down that route um these seller and 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 these sellers leave they're not coming back so I just want eBay to, to to think about the repercussions if that is happening, if that is what's happening, because that is a burn your bridge kind of scenario. These sellers will never come back. In fact, they, it's not that they won't ever come back. They will be vocally against eBay. Like it would just, it would be a bad look. And I, and I hope that's not the case because I like to think of eBay as a place where you can go and you can buy anything. And if that's not the case, a couple more thoughts that come from there is where is that place going to be? Because now is, now is, and I've been saying this and I've been saying this, but now if there was ever a time for a competitor who exists now, to step up their game, Posh, Mercari. I mean, I've often thought that a, that, that if a platform like like Craigslist could, and I, I'm not saying Craigslist per se, but I'm saying if you could blend a business model that sells local and online, and maybe it exists and I just don't know about it, I think in this day and age of sustainability and rising transportation costs, that would be win-win, you know? And, and maybe it's like, you know, maybe it's, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just spitballing here. But if there was ever a time for some company to, to jump up and, and, you know, try to bite off a little bit of eBay's market share, now would be the time. And then another thought is high sell-through rates. Things that... It, it, why, okay, if I have an item that... This magnifying glass. If this has a really high sell-through rate, and I know, and I know that it is desirable, why would I not just sell it locally? Now, provided, you, you, it depends on where you live, right? It really depends on where you live. But if there's a market for that, why would you not sell it locally versus selling it on eBay? Like, why, why, I guess, why does eBay think, because it's harder to source items with, with high sell-through rates, it feels unsustainable as a business model to only source but again maybe i'm completely wrong maybe i'm just looking at the area where i'm at it would be very difficult 
to source things with only high sell through rates and what why why does eBay think that they're the only game in town to to sell to, to for for these items to be sold on there um oh and then the other part of this eBay never backs down from changes I can think of one time and I can't it had to do with the markdown sale this was like this was before covid it was in the summertime they did something where they changed that once you ran a sale that you had to wait I think 30 days before you could make another sale and I remember thinking that how horrible this was and how this was just going to be disastrous and they did back down I think enough sellers had called in and complained and kind of demonstrated to eBay how this this was wrong um and they changed so in they have been known at least on one occasion to to listen to sellers and make make some changes all right and it seems like uh Allium says Maria's words last week were extremely motivational in these hard times I speak I think I speak for all that we would love to see her on film more. Uh, thank you for that. That does seem to be a resounding theme. I do think she brings an incredible amount of balance to the channel. And again, I was a little bummed out that now now she's leaving just when she kind of like starting to gain some some traction with her with her comments and her and her uh, videos. Um, let me give you a little background on her. She is a, a certified life coach, so I think I think you, that now makes a little bit more sense. She, you know, she helps people with their business and uh, and their and their the issues issues that are going on with with uh, with uh, in her clients' lives. Uh, that's one of the things that she does, um, and we're going to be incorporating that more in. Now, I have a question for the audience. So she had sent me a couple of videos that I inserted in the last video. Now she sent them to me via WhatsApp. When I went to into iMovie to add them, add those videos in, they weren't showing up in my in the videos that I can select from. I don't know why. So then I had to, you know, that's why the video quality on those were were, were very poor. Does anybody out there know? how she would be able to send me either an audio clip or a video clip that I would be able to insert in, you know, when I'm, when I'm putting my videos together in iMovie. And I'm guessing a creator would better know how to answer this, but if anybody knows, uh, yeah, I, cause I don't know, like I'm, I'm very, not versed in technology to say before i get this question i want to go ahead and answer someone might ask why am i not trading right now and there's two reasons number one i do not trust the stock market i do not like we are in a period of growth that has exceeded the markets go up and down and we have gone up for the longest consecutive amount of time without having a significant correction. So it's only a matter of time. Now, if I know anything about the stock markets is that they are extremely irrational. I do want to get back into it someday. Uh, that was my first passion. Um, just like when you sold your first big item or, you know, the first time you bought something for a dollar and sold it for $200, you'll always remember what that is. I'll always remember that my first stock trade was back in 1999. The company was iOmega, and I made $384 in the span of two hours, and I was hooked. I was just like, man, this is amazing. Um, but the markets are so irrational and I got in at the worst possible time. Everything was going up in 1999, just like everything was going up in COVID. There's another parallel, actually, I just now thought about. And so, 
where was I even going with this? Oh, um, the markets are extremely due for a significant correction. So I feel like there is so much risk being in the stock market right now. And then the other reason is I was a technical trader. You can either invest on a chart, you can look for chart patterns, or you can invest fundamentally. These are primarily the two, two, two ways people trade. Fundamentally, you look at a stock and you think it's undervalued based on its earnings and its growth and all the, all the stats. But I was primarily a technical trader. And I felt like my edge, and the edge is kind of like what, what you look for to, to look for a profitable trade, I feel like my edge had dissipated because markets are always changing. Markets are always changing, just like reselling is, is going. Reselling is a market. That market is always going to be changing, and eBay is always going to be changing. Resellers are always going to be changing. So you've got you know you've got three factors there. You've got the economy that's changing. eBay is changing, and we're changing all at the same time. And it it's a, it causes a lot of different um, concerns and uncertainties, uh, all of these things that we as individuals have to try to assess. And you know, it's just it's been this perfect storm in the reselling market that is just causing a lot of uncertainty, angst, uh, fear. And all of these things breed more fear, more pointing the fingers at this and that. I would say if I wish one thing would happen right now, and I think this, I think a lot of people feel like this. I wish eBay would just, they're not helping the uncertainty and the fear by being silent. And maybe they're just, maybe they, which leads me to believe on some level that they don't even really know what's going on. I got an email from uh, a regular and I, I messaged him. I got it. I got it yesterday. I hadn't checked my email for a day. Where is it? Um... I don't really understand because it looks like he copied and pasted part of a prior conversation somewhere. And so he said, hey, I wanted to reach out to you and give you a copy of what I posted on my channel. Now, I didn't see this on my channel anywhere, so I don't know if it got taken down. I know that there is this thing where some comments, they just get taken down. And I don't do that. I don't take down comments. I know that there have been comments that have been taken down, I don't know, by YouTube and then put back. So if you ever, let's say this, if you ever write something on my channel, whether it be something that's controversial or if it's something that you feel is important enough that you've written a significant amount, just copy it. Copy it paste it into an just you know paste it onto a notepad or just paste it so all that effort of writing that that thought or that contribution doesn't go down in the event that it it is taken down and if it is then you can just send it to me and I'll read it so I'm going to read to you I'm just going to read to you exactly what this says I don't actually know what this is but but this particular user in the past and I I don't know if I want to say his name or not because I don't really he he's provided some really good content on some really good feedback, some really good inside information. If you've been on this channel for a while, you probably know who it is. So I'm just going to read it to you and then maybe he'll comment on this video and give a little bit more clarity or maybe some of you guys will get what this is. After some technical associates put us in the right direction, we were able to research a little bit deeper. We are not trying to convince anyone of anything, just trying to keep our micro economy thriving and keep the platform moving forward. Most of this information you may already know due to it being posted on a government website and also online news websites. Easy to search if you spend some time. 
There is so much to read. If you are interested, you will spend days. Our retirement investors group spent countless hours reading and analyzing the data. Here is our group's short notes conclusion. The replatforming, I'm assuming this is talking about eBay as the platform. The replatforming was delayed due to schedule, permits, patents, government agencies, weather, unforeseen circumstances, contracts, component, and material shortages, design changes, upgrades, and labor issues. It is our opinion that the platform goals are delayed by approximately three years due to all the obstacles they have endured. We also believe that COVID destroyed the schedule and caused a lag time in all our phases of development. With that, our investment group is very optimistic. It appears we are seeing the final phase of implementation as they test and troubleshoot various program issues. I would invite everyone to be positive. I know myself, and the members of our group have a different outlook now than we did a week ago after learning some of the circumstances the platforms have faced and is still facing. Our group was tired of feeling and expressing negative thoughts, so we have made an attempt to change with the data and research. Hopefully you will use your energy to do your own research to help create strategies for your business. So I know that uh, James over at My Boring Reseller Life, he had he in the past has talked about this three year rollout, and I believe he believes that we are in the third phase. I'm sorry if I'm misquoting you, James. Um, it's just impossible to remember what everybody says. So it, that's like an all, all of this is air quotes. Um, that would make sense, and. Possibly, maybe we're not in the, in, in, the, in the final phase. Maybe we're, who knows? Again, it's all speculation. But there were, in this, in this comment or in this email that I received, it, it basically states all these reasons. Schedule, permits, patents, government agencies, weather, unforeseen circumstances, contracts, components, material shortages, design changes, upgrades, and labor issues. That sounds like a perfect, perfect storm of something that is going to cause significantly pro significant issues with I'm guessing the eBay platform. I'm guessing this is what this is referring to. I don't see why he would send me anything. So, all of that does make sense. And it does make sense that that's why we're seeing kind of like the mess that the website is. To me, this is encouraging that this is a temporary fix. To me, this makes sense that eBay, you know, why air, why air out there, you know, the issues that they're having. Um, but I mean, they could have done it, they, they could have made a public announcement that, you know, that, that didn't have maybe involve all this. And, and I mean, I'm not even, I don't know. I just wanted to share this with you guys because to me this is encouraging that again and this is this is also more reasons why maybe potentially making drastic changes in one's business plan is an overreaction to the current state of what we're what, what we're doing. Now I'm not telling anybody how to do anything. You know, I am yeah. Everybody has to make the decisions. I'm only trying to offer some insight, uh, trying to look at things from the bigger picture, the the macro, I guess is what you want to call it. So what are your thoughts on this email that I received? Okay, um, something else I wanted to ask if you guys were experiencing, when you guys do comps, like let's say you're outsourcing and you do a comp. Are you guys getting like messed up search results when when you're trying to get comps on things? Because I'm finding that as well. Like I'm I'm it, it's it doesn't seem like it's reliable. And so that's something else that I was thinking about. Nobody else talks. Everyone talks about how the search is messed up and how they're getting you know results that aren't applicable. You know you're you know I'll be I'll be typing in. For a button and I'm getting like t-shirts or mugs or something that is completely unrelated but I'm also I am finding though when I'm trying to do comps on things when I'm searching and then you you know you click the sold 
that the, the results are not as targeted and, and that's challenging. That's difficult for a reseller. Are you guys finding that? So um, I'm gonna be wrapping this up. I feel like there was something else I wanted to say. Oh, um, local sales have been abysmal lately. Like, uh, and, and I expect as, we, as I get into the later part of fall and winter, those will probably significantly decline. So hopefully Q4 does pick up you know, or at least stabilized. Uh, well, not, I, I hope it picks up to be honest with you, but we will see. Um, I actually countered a couple uh, orders over the last couple of days, just because the offers were just nowhere near where I, you know, I had a line in the sand. I actually declined an offer. Um, um, there was a Disney bag that I, somebody had made an offer on I literally countered a dollar and a half higher. He 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 made an offer for for fifteen, which is about what the used ones were going for. The one that I had was brand new, and I thought, you know, it it was eighteen. It was significantly discounted. I'm running a very significant discount right now just to create some sales, and so in my mind, I was like, it's already really discounted. I just don't feel good just caving at 15, so I countered, and then he declined. So on some level, buyers are definitely, in my opinion, getting trained to, you know, throw out an offer, and, and if we counter, then they just decline because they're probably seeing success with throwing out really low offers. So I think I want to caution that, you know, again, we all need to do what we need to do to create sales. But um, yeah, I think the times when I can, when it makes sense for me, I, I just, I don't want to reward this bad behavior. Like, like th this is something that Maria has always said, not in regards to reselling, but in regards to just like, you know, raising children or, or, or dealing with our friends or, you know, dealing with circumstances is, or like, you know, if you're driving and somebody is aggressively trying to kind of do something shady on the road to gain a better pool position, it's like she, she'll say like, oh, I don't want to reward that bad behavior. Like that person is obviously doing something they shouldn't be doing to gain an advantage in traffic. And it's like if, if we let them in, then we're rewarding that bad behavior. So I don't I don't ever reward bad behavior because it's only going to encourage more bad behavior in the future. Uh, but yeah, so I, I am encouraged by at least having three or four days of pretty good sales that, you know, and it was a plethora of, of things that, that sold all like DVD, CD, not CDs, buttons, comics, books, uh, like anime stuff, just all, all kinds of stuff, basically all, all, all bread and butter to me. So yeah, let's let's hope for for more sales, and I'll I'll I'll, I'll weigh whether or not. Uh, do you guys think what sold videos are even like worth? Is it is it even worth it? Like in the in the past, I've really struggled kind of deciding like, do I want to openly advertise my store so people can go in? Because when people go in and they look at it, you know, it does it does create a false sense of watchers in terms of like. I know there's plenty of people that get sales from their viewers. I never expect anybody to buy anything from me. The one time it did happen, it felt very surreal. Um, yeah, so I struggle with, you know, do I just put all my links on, on my channel or not? Like, what do you guys think? Do you think it's worth it, not worth it? Uh, especially YouTube creator, YouTube people, like uh, YouTube, YouTube, YouTube people, uh, YouTube creators, like I, yeah, do you ever think that it, it, you're you're opening yourself up to unneeded risk by making your stores that accessible? That's something that I always think about. Um, other than that, guys, if you're still here, make sure you feed that YouTube algo. It helps me out. Um, you know, one of the pivots that I made months ago was YouTube. You know, uh, you know, I I know that. So I will give you an idea. This is a this is a good idea of what 
Well, I can tell you exactly. So my channel was monetized two Thursdays ago. Two Thursdays ago? I think it was two Thursdays ago. So I think it's been like 17 days. I made $114 on YouTube. Now, I haven't been, put, been putting out content daily either, uh, but it, it's, it's not like a get rich kind of kind of thing. But I always want, like, I didn't think I would even make a hundred bucks my first month. So um, thanks, I'm telling you guys this because I do appreciate any of the support that you guys can give me. And, you know, I, I just find it interesting what, you know, learn like when because when i first started i was wondering you know how much do people make in youtube and like it's like a lot of people don't really say so hey, you ever want to know let me know i will tell you but i appreciate the support that you guys do i hope your guys sales are doing well peace and blessings to you i am going to make myself some chicken curry and then i'm going to go to the gym and i'm going to get another four miles today guys so when i when i message you got when i when i if i do a video tomorrow i will have said i have eight miles in out of my 50 miles that I want to accomplish. Consider your health, guys. It is important. We'll talk to you guys soon. I was just going for a walk, FaceTiming with Maria, and I came across this owl. you guys but I never heard owls until I came here. <laughs>